hello guys welcome back do hit the subscribe button if you are here for the first time now let's solve this problem it says that the shaft is supported by a smooth thrust bearing at a and a smooth general bearing at b determine the resultant internal loadings acting on the cross section at c so we have to find the internal loadings at the cross section at this particular point and we are given that here we have the thrust bearing so the thrust bearing can provide support in two directions so it can provide the support along the x and in the y and this can only support in the vertical direction so for finding the internal loadings i'm going to consider the a c segment of of this shaft so for that uh, we must find the support reactions at a so we must find a x and a y so let's draw the all the support reactions so this will be a x this will be a y and at b we will have b y if we were going to consider um, this t c segment of the shaft then uh, we we must have uh, to determine b y support reaction so now i am going to solve this problem by considering this segment of the beam or the section um, of the shaft so i have to find a x and a y so to find a x and a y we have to convert um, this rectangular distributed load by its uh, resultant concentrated load by a point load so the magnitude of that point load will be equal to the area of this distributed load and that uh, concentrated point load which will replace this distributed load will act at the midpoint of this uh, at the centroid of this area so this uh, distributed load is acting on a length of two meters so the resultant which will which will replace this distributed load will be acting somewhere here at the midpoint so one one meters from both sides so let's represent let's let me show that this point load so let's say that this point load is the resultant force for the distributed load fr and this the magnitude of this fr will be equal to the area of this rectangle so the area of this rectangle is this is 600 the height is 600 the intensity of this distributed load is 600 so 600 multiplied by 2 so 600 and this is you guys can see that fr is equal to 600 so 600 is newton per meter multiply by 2 meters so meter cancels out with meters so we'll be left with 600 multiplied by 2 so that is 1200 newton so 1200 newton is the point load which replaces the rectangular distributed load and this uh, resultant uh, point load is acting at point C So now Once we replace the distributed load then we have to apply the equilibrium conditions So if we apply the sum of the forces in the X That must be equal to zero towards the right is our positive X now only a X is acting in the Horizontal direction. So this must be equals to zero The sum of the forces in the Y a must be equals to zero but as you guys can see that in the y direction a y is unknown and b y is unknown so before going to apply the sum of the forces in the y i'm going to apply the sum of the moment about point a the sum of the moment about point a must be equals to zero the counterclockwise moment is considered to be positive now a, a x is zero a y is passing through point a it's not going to produce the moment about point a b y is producing the counterclockwise moment about point a so i will write plus counterclockwise moment is positive plus b y and the moment arm of this b y from that point a is this distance which is one plus one plus one three it's four point five so four point five multiplied by b y so four point five b y then this f r is producing the clockwise moment about point a so you will write minus fr is 1200 and the perpendicular distance of this fr from that point a is this distance which is 2 meters so multiply by 2 
and similarly this 900 newton force is producing the clockwise moment as well so we will write minus 900 multiply by the perpendicular distance so this is the whole distance which is this is 3 meters and this is 3 meters as well so 6 meters so the length of the whole shaft is 6 meters this is 6 and this is equal to 0 so from this we can say that by is equal to 1200 into 2 plus 900 into 6 divided by 4.5 so this is equal to 1733.33 or 5200 divided by 3 so let's say that by is equal to 5200 divided by 3 and the units will be in newton now once we find by we can apply the sum of the forces in the y that must be equals to zero upward direction is considered to be positive now a y is acting in the positive y direction so plus a y the fr is acting in the downward direction in the negative y so we will write minus 1200 by is acting in the positive y by is now 5200 divided by 3 and that's 900 newton force is acting in the downward direction so this is equal to zero from this we can say that a y is equal to 1200 minus 5200 divided by 3 plus 900 let's find this 1200 minus 5200 divided by 3 plus 900 so this gives us 1100 divided by 3 or 366.67 so a y is equal to 1100 divided by 3 newton now once we find a y we can consider this a c segment so for that i have to cut the the shaft at point c and then we must consider this segment a a c you guys can see we are only left with this portion of the distributed load which is acting at a distance for a distance of one meters so now we must replace um, this distributed load by the by its concentrated load by its corresponding con concentrated load which will replace it and similarly this was a x and a x is equal to zero so let's uh, remove this a x is also equals to zero and we know a y this is this is a y a y is 1100 divided by 3 so first let's replace this 600 newton uh, distributed load so again let's say that this will be f this is point c so let's say f a c will be equal to now 600 newton per meter multiplied by the length along which it's acting or we can say that the area of this rectangular load so this is 600 multiplied by 1 so 600 newton meter multiplied by 1 meter this is equal to 600 newton so now we can replace this 600 newton meter rectangular distributed load by 600 point load so this is 600 newton and this 600 newton uh, force must pass through the centroid of this small rectangle now so the centroid of this small rectangle will be a at a distance of half of this length from this end and from this end so this means from this end this this distance will be one uh, one divided by two that is 0 0.5 so this is 0 0.5 so now let me show that this is from here to here this is 1.5 uh, sorry 0 0.5 0 0.5 meters and now since we want to find the internal loadings at c so at c we will have vc this is vc and uh, we will have the normal force at c this is nc and then we will have the bending moment so the bending moment mc so now we want to find vc and c and mc so to find these three we must apply the equilibrium conditions considering segment segment ac of the shaft so now we will apply the sum of the forces in the 
in the y that must be equals to zero upward direction is considered to be positive now vc is acting in the positive y so plus vc plus vc minus this 600 and plus ay ay is acting in the positive y now ay is this which is 1100 divided by 3 so 1100 divided by 3 this is equal to 0 and from this we can say that vc is equal to 600 minus 1100 divided by 3 so vc is 600 minus 1100 divided by 3 so this gives us 700 divided by 3 and 233.33 so vc is equal to 700 divided by 3 or this is equal to 233.33 3, 3 newton and it is acting in the upward direction so we see the resultant internal shearing force at the cross section at point c is 233.33 newton and it is acting in the upward direction similarly if we apply the sum of the moment about point a or, or if we apply the sum of the forces in the x that must be equals to zero towards the right is our positive x direction now nc is acting in the positive x and we have that ax as well let's say if we have if we show that ax which is equal to 0 so we can say that nc plus ax is equals to 0 or we can say nc is equal to minus ax and ax is equal to 0 so th this means that nc is equals to 0 so the resultant normal internal loading at the cross section at point C is also equals to zero. So to find MC, we have to apply the sum of the moment about point C that must be equals to zero. Counterclockwise moment is considered to be positive. Now we have MC. This MC is the assumed direction is counterclockwise, so we will write plus. And this VC is producing the counterclockwise moment as well, so we will write plus. Vc is 700 divided by 3 multiply by the moment arm. So this is the moment arm which is 2 meters. So you will multiply this with 2. And this 600 Newton force is producing uh, the clockwise moment. So you will write minus. And the perpendicular distance of this 600 Newton from that point A is this distance which is 1 plus 0 0.5. So 1.5. Or we can say this is 3 divided by 2. 1.5 is 3 divided by 2. So this is equal to 0. Now we can say that MC is equal to minus 700 divided by 3 into 2 plus 600 into 3 divided by 2. So minus 700 into 2 divided by 3 plus 600 into 3 divided by 2. So this gives us mc equals to 1300 divided by 3 or this is equal to 433.33 newton meter and the assumed direction is now accurate because we got the positive sign so mc was assumed to be in the counterclockwise direction. So this is counterclockwise. So the internal bending moment at the cross section um, through point C is 433.33 Newton meter and it is in the counterclockwise direction. So this is the solution of this particular problem. I hope this will help you in your learning. Let me know in the comments if this helps. Do subscribe Engineers Academy for the solution of such more problems from Mechanics of Materials by R.C. Hibler.